Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Well, today it's going to be 68 degrees only. The weather this week has really cooled down. It's only going to be upper 60s, lower 70s, which is just lovely. So I think I'm going to have to forego my decluttering for a week or so and start working on getting my garden ready for winter. So this year I didn't plant any fall crops. Um, I need to put in a little water sprinkle system next year because I'm tired of watering. So next year maybe I'll extend the garden season into the fall. But I think I've decided next year I'm only going to plant limited vegetables. I'm not going to plant any of the brassicas, um, cabbages, and cauliflower and those sorts of things. I'm just going to stick to basic greens, tomatoes, peppers, and some zucchini and eggplant because those all did well this year and uh, hopefully I can repeat that next year. The, um, ca uh, not ca yeah, the cauliflower pretty much just was leaves, which are edible too, but they're a little on the tough side, so, um, and that seems to be what attracts a lot of the cabbage moths and things, and the same with the cabbage. I ended up with three little tiny cabbages. Two of them are still in the garden and they're just all chewed up. So um, I don't have much luck with those usually. And in my opinion they take a lot of maintenance and cabbage and, and cauliflower are not that expensive to buy in the store. So and you know, you can buy frozen cauliflower, and it's just just as good, just as nutritious. So I'm going to forgo those next year and instead plant more kale and perpetual spinach and lettuces, things of those nature. And, of course, I'm going to plant flowers again because the marigolds and the zinnias did really, really well this year. So every year the garden takes on a different tapestry, and it, it makes it really nice. So, all right, let's put some cream in here and have a little coffee. So yesterday I didn't end up going to dinner with my mom. She called me, oh, an hour or so before it was time to go, and she just wasn't feeling up to it, so... Um, I'll just go over there and visit with her and maybe have a pizza with her another day of this week. And tonight I'm supposed to go out to dinner with my son, which will be nice. But, um, <clears throat> so the celebration continues. All right, let's give this a taste. Cheers. Okay, that'll do this morning. So, um, I'm going to go enjoy this coffee now. Think about my garden and what I'm going to do next year. Like I said, first thing before I plant anything is going to have to be some sort of a little uh, either drip irrigation or some kind of a little sprinkler system um, so that I can keep the garden watered a little bit more consistently. So, all right, I will meet you at the budget book in just a little bit. All right, back at the budget book. So yesterday I didn't spend any money. Since I didn't go out to eat with my mom, I didn't have the opportunity to stop at Walmart to pick up creamer, and that was perfectly fine. So I'm just making do with what I have. Um, I'm using the creamer that's already in there that I originally bought for my grandson. 
and I'm adding just a little bit of chocolate syrup to that and it's similar but not the same but that's all right I can put off um, getting the creamer so I'm not planning on spending any money today either um, I'll have to see if my son still wants to go out for dinner. If not, that's fine too. I'm okay with that. I need to start working in my uh, backyard. I need to um, get my deck taken apart. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And then some of the things like the tomatoes and stuff may still ripen in the garden so I don't want to pull all those out just yet but it's getting to be time the weather has really cooled off it's a typical fall weather now so but we don't have a whole lot of rain in the forecast I think there's only one day this week where we're going to have some rain so I'm very happy that fall is here um, summer was nice. It was a really beautiful summer, but um, I'm happy now to have the fall weather and get cozy inside once I get the garden cleaned up. There's quite a bit to do out there. And this year has taught me several lessons about uh, what to buy for the garden, what I need yet, and what I don't need any more as far as the gardening goes. So my focus next year is going to be on saving more money in the garden um, and uh, planting a little bit less. The winter sowing worked great so I'll continue to do that and the vegetables that I want to plant uh, did real well with the winter sowing last year. So that's my plan on saving money in the garden for next year. And in my opinion, the best time to plan for next year's garden is actually at the end of the season of this year's garden. Because I know what did well, what didn't do well, and by the time winter rolls around, I'm going to forget a lot of those things. So... That's going to be my plan. And then during the winter, I, I actually like pl planning my garden in the winter. But I'll just use that time to tweak it and come up with some new ideas. So always something to try and save money. This year um, is going to be a very expensive year for me because of home repairs. Um, but... They need to be done if you want to own your own home. You have to maintain it. So I got an estimate in the mail. I had had, when I was deciding what to do with my front window, uh, I got a few estimates on replacing the glass only instead of replacing the windows. Well, I know I've talked about this before, and the window is going to cost me to have the, it's actually two windows, but they're together so it's like one big window but it's going to cost me sixteen hundred dollars to have the windows replaced well one of the estimates came in just to replace the glass on those two windows was over two thousand dollars just for the glass I mean it's like seriously <laughs> that's just ridiculous now my windows do have the grids inside of them. I mean, that's the way the house was built. That's the way all the houses on the street are. So there's certain guidelines you have to go by. But uh, I just thought that was outrageous. You know, you can get two brand new windows um, instead of just replacing the glass. And, you know, and then we wonder why, you know, everybody is so hyped up on the green movement and oh not wasting this and don't do this and don't do that and then everything is made disposable 
your appliances, your windows, whatever it is, everything goes in the trash. And that's not good. You know, we need to get back to um, reusing things and, and fixing appliances, but the way they make them nowadays, you can't even fix most of the things. Same way with cars. They're so expensive to fix. Everything's computer, computer. You know, your backyard mechanic that used to be able to fix a problem can't do it anymore because it's all computer. So um, I think really, you know, we're supposed to be headed in a different direction with all this green movement. But I think on the other hand, I think it's just making things worse. You know, you have these smart appliances that are just, um, you know, a computer is, is everything, all these bells and whistles and all that stuff. Give me simple. That's why I liked my old washer and dryer. My dryer is still my old dryer, but I actually liked my old washer better than I liked this new one. Because it's all, oh, you got to push this button, and then you got to push that button, and then you got to hold it and push it, and oh, it, it's just a real pain. And then to repair them is absolutely ridiculous. So that's my spiel on the new green thing going on. Um, I, I think it's just, it's not helping, let me put it that way. If you don't agree with me, leave me a comment below. And we can have a conversation about it. That's okay. I don't mind as long as you're polite and you have a reason for thinking the way you think. Um, I think that's wonderful. More conversations need to be had. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish my coffee and uh, think about what I want to do today. And then I'll be back later. Hi, sweetie. Time to look in the fridge. I need something for breakfast. All right, let's take a look. So I'm trying not to go shopping, right? I'm trying to use up what I have. And really, for me, this is pretty empty. Now, all of these, these are all condiments, so don't pay any much attention to that. I have a little bit of bread left that I can still eat um, in here. I've used up most of my cheese. I still have a little bit. I have a homemade pork seitan cutlet. And I have this Hillendale mild cheddar. So I have cheese, I have a little bit of hummus left, just a tiny bit of cream cheese, and these are mainly um, vegan cheeses. So I have that left, but that's not for breakfast. I could have the cheese for breakfast. Let's see down here, I still have some yogurt. It's dairy yogurt, and I still have some soy milk, cherry tomatoes. This is my grandson's pizza, but I want something for breakfast. So I have two apples that are getting a little shrivelly looking. So I think I want to make something with those, the soy milk. Um, let's see, I still have some eggs from my daughter, so maybe I'll make an apple pancake. That would be good. All right, I will meet you at the stove. Okay, so in order to save money, uh, I'm not a big cereal eater, so... But I want to use up this apple. I have an egg. I have uh, soy milk in here uh, with a teaspoon of vanilla. In here I have a cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder. 
a half a tablespoon of sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt, and then I added about, oh, half a teaspoon of cinnamon too, which the recipe actually didn't call for. But um, So I just want to use up what I have because I don't want to go grocery shopping until a week from today. And uh, I may even go longer. I may go skip the whole month. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, these are the ingredients that I had in my fridge that I want to use up. So I'll be back after I get this apple pancake made. Well, I'm just baking this pancake in a little bit of margarine, butter, whatever you have, oil, um, until the apples are tender. So I have it on like a medium-low heat. And I think this will be really tasty. So what I did was I went online and I just looked for um, an a pancake, apple pancake. Well, it was actually a just a pancake recipe for one. And I added apples to it and cinnamon. And uh, I looked for something that had the ingredients that I had on hand. So that's the way I'm going to cook this next week coming up. Just look up recipes for the ingredients I have and for recipes for one or two people so I don't make too much. All right, so here's my apple pancake. Let me give it a taste. It looks good. I just topped it with some powdered sugar. I might put some syrup on it. I'm not sure. So let's give this a taste, see if it's any good. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's good. It needs some syrup, though. So, I have a little bit of batter left because two pancakes is more than enough for me for breakfast. So, I'm just going to save this batter and thin it out a lot, maybe tomorrow. And I'm going to make some crepes out of it and I have a little bit of apple left I'm just going to chop that up and put it on my pancakes so um, that should be enough for and if I thin it down for uh, at least a couple of crepes so another meal so that's a very cheap expensive in inexpensive uh, meal for breakfast well good morning here we are again at my kitchen table, one of my favorite spots. Still finishing up morning coffee. Cheers. Well, today I wanted to talk a little bit about, I've been thinking about this. You know how everybody's always saying, Living, live within your means, live within your means. Well, living within your means is fine and dandy um, if you've always lived within your means it becomes a little bit more difficult if you've had you've gotten used to a certain lifestyle you've gotten used to a certain income and then for whatever reason whether you lose your job or you retire or something else happens, uh, you find yourself in a position where living within your means becomes extremely difficult. Now, when I was younger, I had, um, well, the last few years that I worked anyway, I had a decent job. Uh, most of my younger adult life, I had a mediocre job. I mean, I didn't set the world on fire with my earnings. Um, I was a hairdresser. We worked on mostly commission and tips. So it was, it was good. I mean, at that time I was married and I had someone to share the expenses with for my children and my house and everything else. So back then, 
living within our means was much easier. I worked part-time and then part of the time I stayed home with my babies. And when they went to school, I went and got a part-time job. My uh, first husband never really wanted me to work. He liked me to be a stay-at-home person, but I liked to work because I just wanted to get out and earn a little extra money of my own and um, also um, be around people my age because being a hairdresser, it was a very social job and I enjoyed that. But I never made a lot of money doing that part-time. Um, and usually my the money I earned bought the groceries for the week. So back then, um, financially, we were able to live within our means. That was back in the, uh, in the 70s. <clears throat> so then, uh, after I got divorced, it got a little harder. Um, and you guys know that have been with me for a while, you know this story. Uh, I became a single mom. I had to go back to school. I worked full time. I went to school part time. And that was a long stretched out process. <clears throat> it took me about altogether once I started back to college, it took, <laughs> took me about 12 years before I finally finished everything up. But that was because I switched a career path right pretty much right in the middle of things. I was going for computer studies, but back at that time, the computer jobs were few and far between. So I switched to nursing, and even though the basic cla uh, classes that I took were still good, you know, you specialize in each given career choice. So yeah, I was becoming a professional student part-time and luckily, because I was a single mom with a low income back there, uh, I was eligible for Pell Grants, which was wonderful. So I didn't have student loans and all that that I had to repay. So thank God for that. <clears throat> now, I could have gone on with my education and, um, you know, gotten a, a bachelor's or a master's or, you know, whatever I wanted to do do, but I didn't want to take the loans out for that, and I didn't want to have to repay that money. And honestly, uh, in nursing, you don't really have to have those higher degrees in order to make a decent wage. So when I switched to nursing, one of the main reasons was because as a hairdresser, I really didn't get much in the way of benefits, health care, or any of that. So anyway, Getting back to the subject matter, so that was one time in my life where it got really difficult to live within my means. I managed, but uh, it was really, really hard because my whole um, lifestyle had to change. So when you are ready, when you find yourself in that position and you already have a house or you already have a car payment, or whatever it is you already have, and then your income goes south, it gets really, really difficult to live within your means. So, and I'm finding that even now, uh, because when I got married, well, let me just back up. Once I was done with nursing school, my income um, improved quite a bit. So, but that was only the last maybe 10 years of my career that I really uh, made decent money. So, and then um, I also uh, had a significant other at that time that uh, we shared the expenses and so um, I was able to live within my means at that time. Well, when that relationship split up, again, I found myself solo, <laughs> and um, 
I had uh, built this house. I was still good because I was making good money as a nurse. But then um, the bottom kind of fell out of nursing for a while there. And the company that uh, I worked for, they did a lot of downsizing and switching around. And I was in, in the nursing corporate world. So um, I lost my job because of downsizing, but thank goodness uh, the boss that I had gave me a temporary position um, in Cincinnati, which is like a, a two and a two and a half hour drive from where I live. So I had to live in Cincinnati during the week and I'd come home on the weekend. So um, at that point in time, um, that did give me enough time to find another job before things totally went south. But since I had planned on having the original job, I had built this house and I furnished it and I was able to live within my means at that point. But again, a big life change. So at that point, um, it became really, really difficult. So <laughs> this is like a cycle. Um, I've had the good, the bad, and the ugly. So now, uh, then I married Tom, and uh, he and I, of course, you know, we shared the bills. And at that point, um, we were good financially. So we were able to live within our means. Well, then that didn't work out either. <laughs> I'm not good at cards or love, I guess, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm perfectly happy. But again, I found myself in a situation where living within my means became extremely hard because I had retired thinking that, okay, the two of us would be just fine. Um, we had enough money between the two of us to maintain our lifestyle. But then when we split up, of course, I, again, had to pick up all the bills and all the costs. And I was living on a retirement income at that point. So, again, it became extremely difficult to live within my means because I already had my house. I already had a car payment. Um... Now, fortunately, my kids were already grown, but still, you know, it makes it really difficult when you're going from a two-person household to one. So that's why I say living within your means isn't it always as easy as people want to make it out to be, because you already have things that need to be maintained, need to be paid for, um, and it's not that easy unless you just say, okay, I'm selling my house, I'm selling my car, I'm going to move into an apartment where all I do is walk uh, to wherever I need to go. So most people are not willing to do that, and I'm included in that. So, but it does, it's not easy when your income goes way down from a different level to um, live within your means. And it's something that sometimes you can't even accomplish it, even though you try. And to uproot yourself is really difficult too. You know, you're used to living in your house, you're used to living in your neighborhood, if you have a car and you drive to the store, uh, personally, I don't want to live in a very um, uh, urban area. I just would not feel happy and comfortable in that environment. So you have to sort of take that into consideration too. So living within your means becomes very difficult when you own your own house or you own uh, uh, your car, maybe you're still paying on your car, uh, car repairs, home repairs, um, if you're in an HOA, your fees go up, 
you know, there's, there's all sorts of factors that they don't take your income into consideration. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's not good to be you, I guess. So another time where it's really difficult to live within your means, if you have family obligations. Now, I see that with my daughter. Her, her children are all in sports and, um, you know, they, they need school supplies, which have really gone up crazy. Uh, inflation is another big, big deal, you know, that makes it really difficult to live within your means. Um, you know, she needs to feed them, of course. That's gone crazy. So family obligations, you know, what do you do? Well, kids, I'm going to feed you macaroni and cheese and oatmeal for the rest of the time that I raise you. You just, you can't do that. You have to give them healthy meals. You have to provide clothes for them. Um, because what happens, too, a lot of times when you have kids, um, you know, children are very much... Um, they want to be like their friends. They don't want to be that odd man out that has the ragtag clothes on or doesn't have lunch money or, you know, because kids can be really mean. You know, they can, you can get picked on. So um, to some level, you have to sort of maintain <coughs> their lifestyle as well. Um Another thing that makes it really difficult to live within your means is you own pets. <laughs> and you know I own pets. But, you know, again, you have to feed them decent food. You can't feed them garbage. Um, you have to give them, provide them with toys and treats and, you know, different, uh, different things that as much as you can afford. And there's only so much that you can downsize. Or if your pet develops a health problem, like my little Allie had before she passed away uh, a few years ago. She was diabetic for four years. I had to provide her with insulin and, um, you know, a certain diet and doctor visits. So if you own pets, it's really difficult to live within your means. And then you say, well, then don't get pets, you know. But then again, if you're an animal lover, um, it's a pleasure. To, one of the few pleasures that you can allow yourself if you really, really have a small income. So having pets, or let's say you already had pets, and then your income changed. Uh, what are you going to do? Dump those pets at a shelter? You know, not if you're a... Uh, you know, no, that, that just is no. So that is a big factor of um, living within your means. You know, it makes it very difficult. Um, another thing that makes it very difficult for you to live within your means is if your health goes south. Now, a lot of us, it happens, especially as you grow older. I mean, even if you take good care of yourself. I mean, we all have an expiration date, and you never know when something like that is going to come up. And um, that costs a lot of money, too. Some people can't afford health care. Um, so, you know, and, and a lot of the health care that's out there for people that are low income is really not good. You know, it's it's just really bad. So your your uh, medical cost goes up. Your uh, medications. What if all of a sudden you develop diabetes and you have to go on diabetic medication? So there's all sorts of mitigating factors why living within your means is very difficult for people that don't have money. And, you know, it's like, yeah, you got to save some of your money. you got to save some. But if you have factors that come into your life that need to be taken care of, there's nothing left to save. You know, you can't even get ahead of the game and start a fund of anything. You know, and saving $5 a month 
isn't going to help you. I mean, I'm sorry, it just isn't. You know, in, in a whole year, that, that's going to be a um, little over $500. So, you know, most, most people's expenses are way higher than that. No, not 500 It would be $50, like maybe $55. So, you know, whoopee, what are you going to do with that? So living within your means is very difficult, and I know that um, tightening the belt is about the only way that you can at least tread water. Um, and like I said, not everybody wants to sell their house. And even if you sell your house and you go live in an apartment, you know, the apartments that are available to you on a lower income, I mean, who wants to go live in, in a, a tent on the street or in a, in a really crummy neighborhood where you have to worry about getting robbed or, you know, you can't even go outside for a walk because you've got all these uh, types hanging out at the corner and, um, you know, anyway, I just wanted to rant a little bit about that. You know, the concept of living within your means is great. It really is. But there's all kinds of circumstances. You know, if you start out as a young person and you start living within your means and nothing much changes in your life, you know, you may stay single your whole life. Uh, the, the only thing that would really impact it a lot would be um, inflation. And, and that's like out of control, so, but they don't care, you know, they, they, they'd be more than happy to come in and buy up your house, all these, all these companies like BlackRock, and, you know, I constantly have people asking me, uh, sending me cards in the mail, or, or uh, phone calls, oh, do you want to sell your house, do you want to, sell? and it's all these developers that come in and buy up all this land, and they'd be more than happy to give you money for your house, but it's not really going to be what the house is worth either. So anyway, what can we do? Well, the best thing that I can do at this point in my life is basically tread water. And hopefully, another big tsunami won't come along and wash my plans away because <laughs> that could happen too depending on where you live or you could have a tornado rip through your neighborhood some people can't afford insurance or the insurance they have hardly covers anything so what do i do well i try my hardest to save money on food I try to not have too much stuff anymore, I, but I do want to keep what I absolutely have to have, so um, I just don't get rid of everything. I just get rid of things that I know I'm not going to need in the future. So, and like I said, saving money on food is my biggest um place where I'm able to save money. So some people may say, well, get a job, get another job, go do something like that. But even that isn't always possible, especially if you're older, maybe when you're younger and you have enough stamina and you have the opportunities to get a job, that might work out well. But if you're older, first of all, it's not that easy to get employment. And secondly, a lot of older people aren't able to work because of physical disabilities or things like that. And even though there's jobs available that you can maybe, maybe do online, even that, uh, a lot of older people aren't uh, computer savvy so that's not something that is in the cards for them because they may not be able to uh, learn enough skills because computers are very complicated and sometimes as you get older you just don't 
um, have the ability to learn as quickly as a young person does. So that isn't always the uh, solution either, uh, unfortunately. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Let me know what your opinion is about saving money and living within your means when you're broke. Um, if your lifestyle doesn't change too much, it's possible to do that. But it's because you've never gone past that level of lifestyle. But if you've gone past that level of lifestyle and you have to reel, reel back in, it just becomes extremely, extremely difficult. So, all right, my friends, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Let me know what you think. I could be all wrong, and that would be fine. If um, you have some good ideas, leave them in the comments below, and we can have a conversation about it. So, all right, my friends, I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. It helps my channel grow. Thanks for watching.